Hello and welcome everyone to the first season and episode of Mindful Mondays with Laura Cross. I am so excited to have you all here. You know, over the years, I have had the privilege to meet and work with several phenomenal individuals that have not only overcome obstacles, but have been quite successful at finding a healthier, happier, and a more balanced way of life through holistic practices and modalities. I have also found that in today's fast paced world, very few people take the time to slow down and create space for themselves, to be mindful or aware of what their body is trying to tell them. We either get caught up in the rat race, doing what we think other, everyone else expects of us, or we are continuously putting everyone else's needs before our own, and we don't even stop until tragedy strikes and forces us to stop and reevaluate our lives. Mindful Mondays was recorded to build was created to build a community of mindfulness, education, support, connection, and collaboration to support you in your self-care journey. Mindfulness and self-care is something that only you can do for yourself. No one else can do it for you, but it is a whole lot easier when you have support on your journey. And my guest today is here to do just that. I have had the pleasure of knowing Dawn for over three years now. And although she resides in East Texas, she does not have a Texan accent. Like many others, Dawn has had her own childhood traumas and life experiences that ultimately guided her to become an energy healer and to help people understand the mind and body connection. She not only helps others to understand how to get rid of negative energy that is not serving them well, but it's also why it's important to really listen to what your body is trying to tell you. And that's what we're here to talk to you today about is mind and body connection and why we need to listen. So with that, I want to introduce with to you Don Livingstone. Um, Don, please share with people. I, I know you have a, a story, you know, you've had your own things to overcome in your life and how you got to where you are. Hi, Laura. Thank you for having me on your show. It's wonderful to be here. And I do, I do have quite a journey. And you're absolutely right. I don't have a Texan accent. <laughs> I'm originally from Scotland, if you could probably tell that by now. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I have had, you know, a few things going on in my life. And it's only just been recently that I've discovered really what's truly been going on. Because we all live our life and we don't realize that there's things that are wrong we just you know go day to day and just deal with what comes up so it's only just been the last 15 or so years that i have really been able to dig into what's what's been happening to me and what went on in my past um it kind of started off well, i mean i think most people their journey starts off when they're when in their childhood and um my parents split up when i was about four years old and uh, my my mom remarried when i was about seven so we had a blended family and then we had a half a half sister. So there was four of us in the family and, and everything was great. We had a smash in childhood. And then I started to get bullied at school. So I was bullied probably from, I was age 10, maybe 10, 11, right up actually through college, which is, if anybody's been bullied, it's really traumatic. You know, that kind of violent abuse, even just the you know, being encircled outside school and all the humiliation and, and that's it's really horrible in itself. So that creates a lot of a lot of trauma and a lot of hurt in the body. And your body holds on to all of that. It holds on to it, not just in the mind, but in every single cell. So I did what, you know, everybody did. You know, they, they kind of went through school, then, you know, they, they started dating, then they got married, then they have kids, you know, the usual family thing. And and I had just, I, I don't know, my, my last my last marriage um, seemed just like every other marriage starts off absolutely fine. And then over time, it just seemed to get really heavy. And I could never put my finger on on what it was. And I was just going through life, just just ignoring it, absolutely ignoring it, thinking I was strong and, and thinking that if I just ignored it, it would disappear and I wouldn't have to handle it. So the denial was there. Okay. Until one day, um, I took my kids to a karate lesson. I used to take them a couple of times a week. And I was thrown very badly this evening and landed very heavily on my right hip. Now, I was obviously very winded at the time, just a couple of minutes later, and I was fine. I was good to go. I got up and back in the class as if nothing had happened. And it wasn't 
till a couple of days after that. Whereas I woke up in the morning and went to turn over in bed and could hardly move. I had shooting pains up my back and down my right leg, not having a clue what was happening. Anyhow, to cut a long story short, it turned out that that fall had broken the bottom disc in my back and the contents were squeezing out and pushing on my sciatic nerve. And if anybody's ever had sciatica or any pain in the back at all, it's not a pleasant thing whatsoever. It is no. not. I've had, I've had sciatica pain. I've had issues with the back, but not from things leaking out. Mine was a bulge disc and pinching nerves. And uh -huh. it's very yes, painful. very, very excruciating. So the hospital, obviously, they were not wanting to do as much investigation as I would have liked them to have done. But all they did was gave me a bunch of painkillers a bunch of muscle relaxants and some sleeping tablets, sent me home and said, if it's not any better in six weeks, I was to go and see, you know, my, my, my own doctor. So of course it just didn't get any better. It didn't get any better. And I kept getting signed off work. And I think I was off work for about four months with this pain and needs must had to go back to work. And I remember getting a call from a counselor at work saying you know you've been off we would consider that long-term sick you need to come in and have a chat with me just to see if we can you know make um, any accommodations for you and see you know if we need to get you a different desk etc so I went in <laughs> made this appointment that poor woman and the first the first question she asked me was so how are things at home Dawn? Ah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, that poor woman was probably very sorry she asked me that because that seemed to be some kind of bent for me at that time. I just threw all this information on her, everything that was going on at home, the things my husband said, the things he did, how I felt, how I felt emotionally. I just dumped on her probably for a good 30 minutes and bless her, she just sat there and nodded and took notes and and at the end of it she's passing me the Kleenex you know I'm sobbing away and blowing my nose and she said to me so how long have you been getting abused Don?" and I said oh I said I'm really sorry I I have never been abused he's never lifted a finger to me and I don't think he ever will she says, no, she says, you misunderstand the word abuse. She says, what you're thinking about is physical abuse, you know, violence. She says, there are many, many forms of abuse. You have been mentally, emotionally, psychologically and verbally abused. And that was like my light bulb moment because it kind of stopped me in my tracks and made me think about it. And I thought, I just don't quite understand what's happening here because I would never ever have thought I would let myself be abused and then the emotion started to come up you know the the anger the anger firstly towards my husband for treating me the way he had been and then the anger towards myself for letting them and that was my realization at that time was that I was only abused because I allowed it. I had disrespected myself by not holding my boundaries and standing up for myself. I did not feel safe, but I wouldn't acknowledge this to anyone at all. Um, so it was quite, quite an experience that. Um, and just before I went to work, I was, I had been taking some Reiki classes and I think it was my master's I had taken at that time, just shortly before that. And while I was lying flat on the couch, I decided I would pick up one of the books that was on the reading list. And it was, you'll know the book, um, Louise Hay, You Can Heal Your Life, right? Mm -hmm. So I picked up this book and I think I got halfway through the first chapter and the words went along, along the lines of, you know, you create your life so only you can change it. And that was a real trigger for me. I was really angry at that because there's no way I created this accident. I didn't want to hurt myself, but it turns out that I actually did because I was not 
seeing and paying attention to the signs that my body was giving me, that, you know, because things weren't right, I wasn't paying attention to those signs. So I created an accident to stop myself in my tracks so that I would be forced to think of nothing but my well-being. And I really do think that that's exactly what happened because within, after that awareness with the counsellor, three weeks later, I told my husband that our, our marriage was done. And I honestly, I mean, it was quite a rocky time and that was a massive step for me because I had been thinking about it for years, but it was a massive step for me to do because I was so scared of the consequences. I was holding myself back um, from having a, a, a more peaceful life because I was scared of, of what was going to happen at the time I was exiting this marriage. But I've never, ever looked back. And you know that, Laura. You know how happy I am, I am now. Yeah, I, I do. And it, it's interesting that you bring that up because um, it kind of goes along with that saying, you know, we never want to look at it as we created something. It's always easier for us to blame other people. Yeah, you know, and, and, and I was, I was exactly. But someone hits you with, well, that was you. And it's like, you know, yeah, it kind of makes you angry. <laughs> I was exactly like that. I was very much in a victim mentality because I did not understand that I do create my life. Therefore, that just didn't seem right to me. I didn't have the awareness of how life works at that time. I was of the assumption that life happens to you and not because of you. Whereas now I know that life happens because of you. It doesn't happen to you because we we create our lives based on vibrations because energy is vibration and vibration is everything. And every single thing has a specific resonance. So your thoughts, your words, your actions, they all have a specific resonance. And so does the likes of um, money and water, you know, and your, your set of curtains up on the window, <laughs> they've all got a specific vibration. And in that sense, so does every emotion. So anger, resentment, hatred, or love, joy, and happiness. If you look at your life right now, you will you will get an idea of what you are vibrating. Yeah. So are you do you have a happy life or do you have a very sad life? Do you have an abundant life or do you have a life that's full of lack? Because if you if you're vibrating anger, what you will do is attract people in situations to bring you more of that vibration. And because you're vibrating that, that's what the universe brings you. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, a lot of times we talk about the law of attraction and like attracts like, and I think we talk about it maybe possibly in different terms than what you do, but really what we are talking about is that energy that you put out and the vibrations, what you throw out comes out. Uh, it's kind of like they say, if you're going to work and you're already running late, you know, you want to blame the traffic lights and, oh, I've hit every red light. I've hit this. Well, no, you should have just got up earlier and left earlier because you know you're going to possibly hit things. And when you don't go off with that or throw that back, like, I've got plenty of time. Darn, if you won't have green lights, clean sailing all the way. So it's, yeah, like you said, it's, it's the vibration. It's that energy that you throw out. It is. And you emanate it 24-7 all the time. Um, and it, Life is about perception as well. It's about how you perceive things. Um, because what you perceive is your is your truth. It becomes your belief. Therefore, it becomes your vibration. So it's very important to, I find, to open yourself up to a lot of information, information that you possibly don't know. So, you know, continually educate yourself and read and study about the way things um, are through somebody else's eyes, because it really, really does open your mind to different possibilities. And once your mind grasps a perception or an opinion of a different way, so you're thinking out of the box, right. once, once you grab that perception, it's really hard to go back. It's really hard to go back to your old way of thinking. You've kind of got to sever it. You've got to sever that that connection with the past, because basically that's what we're now living. We're now living 
in our past because it's all the vibrations that we have created and accumulated through our lives and that is exactly what we are living now. So it makes sense to really look at that and revisit it and see how things can change, see what needs to be changed, see what vibrations need to be removed and replaced with a higher vibration. Yeah, I think a lot of us get stuck. You play that, you know, we call it broken record, you know, things that you've either heard or you've been told all your life and it keeps playing. You may not even realize it. it could be in your subconscious, but it plays in the back of your head all the time. And it affects what you, you know, it affects what you do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, the way I see it, is if you can picture an iceberg and you've got this little, this little um, top of, of the ice above the water light, but you've got this massive big chunk of ice underneath the water surface that you can't see. The bit above the water that you can see is your conscious mind, right? It's just as a representation. And underneath the water line is your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind drives your life 95% of the time. That is where your your habits are. It's like your autoplay. Uh -huh. It just continues all the time. And, and you run your life on habits with the exception of this 5% that's sticking out the top of the water for decisions that you make when you're conscious. Right. So, and then changing your vibrations, what you're doing is you're reducing the 95% of the subconscious a creation in your life and you're increasing the conscious creation in your life and that's more or less what we want to do not we don't want to do it so fast we want to do it gently you know little by little so that we can retrain our mind and reinforce better habits while you know shedding the old habits that we used to have because the old habits are what keep us stuck in the past and we want to be able to live in the present we wanted to be able to live now mm -hmm. so that we can create a better future for ourselves yeah one of the other examples of that that i've always liked and of course i got it from a movie but it's true you know it's like you're you're that duck on a pond you know it looks like the duck's just cruising along doing just fine when underneath you know you're just really scrambling you're like, it's like a lot of people yeah. are good at trying to bury stuff and hide it and act like they're cool, but their insides are like, you know, really going that mile a minute. Yeah. Yeah. And, and denial is, is a word I use quite a lot with my clients because I didn't realize how often I would be in denial about things that were happening. I would just brush it under the rug, you know, and I used to think that that was, that was strength, you know, that that was courage to not let that sort of thing affect me. I didn't understand it really was affecting me. And by not addressing how it was affecting me, I was really doing myself some damage. I think on it like this. I think about your, your body, your physical body is like a volcano. So you create these emotions throughout life and your emotions get stored in every single cell of your body and your mind. Like it's, it's everywhere in all our x number of trillion cells and um, so we store all that in our in our body and if we don't um you know open these release valves and let this stored up emotion out it's going to build up and build up and build up like a volcano until there's one day something happens that triggers you and you're so affected there is absolutely nothing you can do about it and it's like Krakatoa. <laughs> That's about the only way I can describe it. it. It's it's going to go, it's just going to explode. And that's going to affect you really, really badly. So it's better to release it as you go rather than wait. But brushing and things I under I know you the... have a lot more to share because before we get into how exactly that affects the body, we do need to take a quick break for our sponsors and do our commercial break. But um, I, yeah, and I know you're going to share with everybody more about how that actually affects and how you, when you listen to your body. So you definitely want to stay tuned. We will see you shortly after this quick commercial break from our sponsors.
Hi there, I'm Dawn Livingston, your host on the Transcend and Succeed show. Join me Fridays at 2pm Central for limitless inspiration and ways to help you transcend your limitations. Tune into the Achieve TV network and the Voyage to Vitality channel. Transcend and Succeed show, right here on E360 TV. All right, well, <laughs> welcome back. The last one didn't work so hot, but that's okay. <laughs> First time for everything. Okay. Anyway, we have a lot more to cover, and uh, we will get to your 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 show. And I know your book and stuff. We've got a lot to cover, but first, I want to make sure we let everybody know about how that works. You know, like you said, we you hide these emotions, and you think you're being strong, and you're burying them, and you move on, and you think, oh, it goes away with time. But really, from what I've learned from others, is that it doesn't because it, it, it's, it's still holding in your body. Even if you think you're over it, your, your body says you're not. So maybe yeah. you can explain that a little bit more and talk to people about that. Yeah, yeah. Everything is stored in, in every single one of your cells, like I was mentioning. Um, particularly life experience, like events that you would consider to be traumatic. Now, trauma is all about your perception. Some people can think... It's something very small is traumatic to them, whereas it wouldn't affect others. We're all completely different. Um, every event that we have, we remember what happens. So just take, for example, um, a death of a loved one. So that's grief. And that is that is very traumatic to the body. We have very traumatic to the body. And that vibration sinks into every single cell every single cell and the, the the mind will take like a snapshot so you have a memory and then it links in the body you know the brain sends some chemicals into the body and that creates your emotion and that emotion is tied to this the snapshot this memory and every time you think about the, the memory or it's, it resurfaces you're reinforcing that vibration in the body so it's not getting any less, it's getting more because we've not given it an outlet for release. Um, it can take some time to find, but everybody stores these vibrations in different places. Some people can store, say, grief, and I, I usually see it or, or know that it's across the chest that it's in the lungs. Sometimes I, I feel it in different places. It just depends on where it's going in the body at that time. So I find there's not one particular place. There can be more of one place, but not all of it is stored in the same place, if that makes sense. Everybody's different and they store it in different places. So for example, like an IBS, somebody with IBS, I usually find that can be about an irritation. What is going on in their life that's irritating them at the minute? Other times it can be something a bit more serious. You know, it can be about criticism and self-criticism and that manifests itself in the intestines. Anger is very, very prevalent these days, unfortunately. There's so much anger in the world. And I see that stored 90% of the time in the liver. Mostly it's there and it, it sometimes, you know, it's there in the kidneys too, but it can be in different places. And the way I work is, is intuitively, I just tune into this person's um, energy and I am either feeling it in the body where I need to remove it, or I'm seeing these lovely images, which sometimes are very special. <laughs> And it can be a bit confusing sometimes, but yeah, I find that they're they're all in different places. It, it just depends on the individual and what type of experience they've gone through. It does, and and you know, I've been through grief now a couple of times. Yeah. I lost my husband, you know, eighteen years ago in January. I lost my father, mm -hmm. um, and actually, for me, with both, I felt more like chest pains and 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 pain in my chest. Now, my mother-in-law told me when she had lost her husband, she felt it in her chest. But when my husband, her son died, she felt it in her stomach. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, sometimes with, um, you know, the grief of a loved one, when you're talking about the chest area, 
sometimes say that I just I've got such a pain in my heart and it's because they're heartbroken and I know that sounds like a bit of a bit of a pun but that's literally how the body reacts they want to your body is giving you a message that there's something not right I've, I've got a blockage here and I need you to clear me I don't like this but we're we're not brought up really to understand the messages from the body or the messages that the body is giving us from the mind yeah and people always want like an easy answer or or for it to be some kind of symptom that you can just throw a drug at but um i remember being in florida for my grandma's triple bypass and it was only a couple months after my husband died and they had some show up there about where they were talking about people that had literally died of heartbreak there was mm-hmm. nothing else physically wrong with them other than the fact that they lost someone close to them and they had a heartbreak. And I remember my mom sitting there saying, don't you go dying on me. I'm like, <laughs> you know, I got enough to deal with without that at the same time. But it, it is a real thing. And I, I don't think a lot of people realize, you know, how real, I mean, uh, some people have experienced it. I've seen people, I've had friends where their dad died one day and then the following day their mom died or vice versa yeah. because they were that close and they just yeah. could not imagine life without the other one. Yeah. Yeah. wasn't that the rest of the family wasn't important it's just that's that was their yeah. their world yeah i've come across that as well yeah and and there are various different ways of doing this see there's a lot of healing modalities out there that will be able to help you remove you know remove these vibrations and, and unblock the meridians or the chakras etc talking about it any kind of talk therapy is is fine because it helps you to, you know, get things off your chest and understand where these issues are coming from. But the only problem with with talk therapy, and this is just my understanding, this is my belief on it, and what I have found in my experience, is that talking about it reinforces the emotion because you're bringing back that snapshot in the mind, and the mind's telling the brain to, you know, reinforce the chemicals, and that's what happens. So you're actually building it up instead of clearing it away. So I think it's really important to, you know, do something energetically, whatever it is that resonates with you, to have these vibrations taken from the body. Otherwise, they'll just continue to mount up and mount up and cause problems. Oh, and I'd have to agree with you because not just for griefing and loss, but if you've ever been really hurt by someone or someone that did you wrong or someone that you trusted, you know, I used to always, trail. I felt, yeah, because I thought that was my way of venting and I would be, you know, talking on Tom because I I'm, I'm feel like I'm venting and I'm getting it out of my system, but I'm really not. I haven't really dealt with it because it just, it brings all that back up. And the next thing you know, you're just, you're angry and stuff all over again. It's not really getting rid of it. You might feel like you are, but you're, you're really not. It does help a little bit to get it off your chest. A little bit, but it's not completely gone. Not completely, but some of it you just have to express. You know, this throat chakra puts up with a lot. (laughs) Puts up with a lot every single day. And sometimes if we are, if we're keeping things inside and we're not, we're not speaking our truth, we're not standing up for ourselves and saying, you know, we're not setting our boundaries, then the throat chakra becomes blocked and you could have any issues you know you could you could have a cough you could have a constant a constant cough or a little tickle that's here it, it could manifest itself in many different ways so finding it hard to swallow or feeling like you've just got something yeah. stuck <laughs> yeah quite often i see a really dark a really dark it's like a it's like a cloud over so i know that if it's a dark blue then there's definitely a blockage in there mm-hmm. and nine times out of ten it's because the person needs to needs to speak up and say something because it's like, oh, I really have to say this. And I just I find I can't I, I just can't tell anybody this, you know, but they've, they've got to get it out in some way. In some way, they've got to verbalize it, even if it's just going into a room screaming at the top of your lungs, you know, with nobody hearing, yeah. you've got to clear the, the, the throat. Absolutely. And it's, yeah, it's, it's like you said, seven percent volcano simple. building, and then and it's like the volcano building and waiting to erupt. But mm-hmm. you know, um, yeah, I, I've been in one of those sessions before too, where it was a group thing, and all of a sudden the person was kind of an intuitive and felt that someone else really needed to get off this chest. And next thing you know, they've got the person like yelling and screaming. I'm like, 
okay, if I did that, I feel like somebody would be coming after me with a straight jacket or, or the dog will think huh? I lost my mind, <laughs> you know, but yeah, but it's got to come out one way or another. Yeah. I mean, I did an exercise um, not that long ago, probably just the start of this year. And I find now I, I I talk about a lot of things now, even if I just make a video of myself and watch it back a couple of times, I'm usually, I feel a lot better. But I did um, one of Joe Dispenza's courses and I can't remember the exact meditation, it's completely gone from my mind. But during that, he was having you, he talks about pulling the mind from the body right? So that you can have that disconnect. So you can have the mind on its own with with clarity, without the clouding of the emotions. And I did this, this meditation and we were doing some breathing with it. And it's really quite a powerful thing, the way he did it. And after I finished that, I I, ha- I was walking down down the hallway and I had to stop and put my hand on the wall. I was I have never sobbed like that in my life. And that went on, I would say a good 20 minutes. And I was <laughs> sobbing my heart out and thinking, is this ever going to stop? <laughs> What's happening? Yeah. I didn't think I was this, you know, congested anywhere. But it just goes to show you the different practices on a regular basis, you know, can actually get deeper mm-hmm. and allow the releasing to take place. It's very important. And I felt so light after that. So, so light. Yeah. So. And I, I know different things work for different people. Yes. And for people that have trouble, you know, believing or understanding this, I can say basically if you it can at least dump what you think you know, you know, uh-huh. just admit we don't know everything, you know. <laughs> have an open mind there's really a lot that you can do and learn and there's a lot holistically because i i believe we have an innate ability between you know our mind and body to really heal ourselves like you said if you tune in and listen yeah the body does have an innate ability to heal itself Um, we just need to stop getting in the way um and by that i mean once we have the awareness that, that we are able to feed our body what, what it needs. And when I say feed, I don't just mean food. I mean, what, what, what we eat, what we drink, what we digest mentally. Yeah, what, what we're doing with our eyes on a daily basis, what we put what we put on our skin, what we wash our hair with, what we clean our house with. You know, all this, all this stuff energetically is very toxic to the human body. So the issues are, are really from two places. They're from the mind, which creates the emotions. So this is the memories, this is the trauma. And it's also from the environment. So this is what we, 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 we eat and, 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 and watch on the TV. Um, very, very, very important to watch what you're putting in your body. Very important to detox, you know, read what's on the labels of your food, you know, get to know the things that you shouldn't really be eating because they're highly toxic and covered in pesticides. Get, you know, some awareness and understanding of glyphosate and what it's used for on your food. Learn a little bit about genetically modified organisms, you know, so that you're, you know what you're putting in your body. And look at the ingredient labels on your shampoo or your body lotion and your toothpaste. You know, look and research about what about what they put in it and what the effect is on the body. Because we're bombarded by toxins every single day with every yeah. just about every product we use. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, that, and, you know, we don't even get frustrated with that sometimes, you know, because like my fiance is a type two diabetic. So I'm always looking at the different labels because there's different things that affect the lack of exercise or this. And and after a while, you're just like, OK, I don't have time. <laughs> I don't have time for this to be reading everything. I'm not saying you can fix everything. But if you have a distinct issue. Um, you know, whether it's, I've known people that just say, oh, the ADHD. Well, a lot of that, from what I understand from other nutritionists and stuff, it could just simply be diet. It could simply yeah, be the, yeah. the diet that you're putting in. It's not that they really, you know, have necessarily a disease that you have to throw drugs at, but you can actually adjust things. Yeah. Uh, well, let, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It's- yeah. Yep, Definitely.
All about um, what you put what you put in, in your body, be very careful. Organic where possible as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most definitely. So when you work with clients and you find, I mean, I'm sure there's some tips or techniques that you can share with people or maybe, or how, how would they even start, you know, to take a look at, you know, something this, or maybe they have an issue. Where would you suggest they even start? Well, I ask mm -hmm. questions about the issues that they're experiencing. Um, and then I read their read their body, can read their organs, um, and find out where these blockages are. I would have to say that, unfortunately, between ninety and ninety five percent of my clients have been sexually abused as a child. Mm -hmm. It's um, very massive. I didn't realise how how massive it was, but most people that come to me are able to have a few sessions and then feel so much better about themselves. Um, so really it's about, you know, asking the right questions and doing the investigation. And then I run energies that will remove it, but I ask it in a specific way that's going to be for their, their be in their best interest. Uh -huh. So I use a very positive intention. It's not something that I can, I can't harm anybody with it nor would right. I ever, ever want to. Um, but, you know, thankfully, I've just said nothing but really good feedback from my clients. So I'm very happy with that. So yeah, a, a bit of investigation and some vibration, really, is, is what I do with my clients. So do you do a free consultation then with I, them? I do. Um, yeah, I, I give them a free 30 minute consultation just to explain to them how it all works and see if we're, if we're going Which to be good to work with website? each other. It's on my website, yes. There you go. And there is yeah. her website. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, definitely want to reach out to Dawn. Um, and, you know, especially if you had any of those issues. It, it, it really is a phenomenal thing. Like I said, if you're open-minded to understand that we haven't, you know, got rid of things, there's, there's reasons why our bodies are either creating certain pains or doing certain things. Like we were saying, hard to swallow or throats, or like you said, a constant cough. Um, doesn't mean it's every, everything's that way, but almost all of us have gone through some kind of trauma or abuse or, and, and as you touched on it, like your um, counselor did, you know, we all think abuse. First thing we think of is someone hitting, but there's yeah. more to it than that. Trauma Much is more, more than necessarily mm -hmm. living you know, losing someone, it could be a number of things, um, being bullied, you know, like you said, it is a number of things that we all experience something different. And to each, I think to each individual, it's a different level. You know, sometimes I might think something's bad. I hear somebody else is like, wow, okay. I didn't have it that bad. Doesn't mean what I went through didn't still. <laughs> Doesn't still affect like you any less. Absolutely. And that's what I was talking about. It's all about perception. It's about, you know, my perception would be different from yours about the same thing. You know, it's just how, how we perceive it. Um, but one thing I would add to that is um, anybody looking to change their, their life, and be, and, you know, more positively, they've, they've got to be ready to change. They've got to be ready to face the things that are going to come up during these sessions. And they've got to allow that vulnerability to come through before they can then acknowledge it and allow it to pass. So there is periods of, you know, being a bit uncomfortable about doing the work, but you've got to, you've got to do the work. If you do the work, then you get the results. So you've got to be ready and, and want, you know, truly want to, to change. And you've got to come in with the attitude that you will be brutally honest, not just with me, but with yourself, you know, because it's all about, it's all about you. It's not about me. It's all about you. I'm just guiding you. Um, so, yeah, it's you've got to have that willingness, that willingness to change. You know, and you and I were talking earlier and we mentioned it a little bit in the first half. Like you said, it's all about perception and that um, life doesn't happen to you, <laughs> you know, because of you. You share that with them a little bit about, you know, kind of that realization. I know you were angry when you were laid up and all of a sudden you couldn't do what you normally do. But. And I know you didn't exactly like what your Reiki master had told you, but <laughs> no, I, well, it was very uncomfortable. And this is before this is before I understood that things were were really not as as they seemed. Um, I was kind of I, I don't know if I was looking for somebody to blame. 
I don't think I was I was looking for somebody to blame. It just wasn't me. That that was it. I did not feel that I caused that accident. And I don't think people do think that. They don't think they cause anything. It was just one of these things. Life happens to you. Um, but I really was. I was very, very low at that time. I mean, when I think back to it, it's, it wasn't a good time for me. I was very low and probably, probably depressed when I was thinking about it and in so much pain and if you're in excruciating pain like that you know how it makes you feel mentally you just feel so flat and so heavy but yeah I had mentioned to my Reiki teacher but and when she came back she totally turns my she just batted the ball right back into my side of the court you know here you are take that away and think about it but it was so well placed, that ball, because I sat and I thought, what on earth is she talking about? I have no clue what she's trying to tell me. And it was a couple of days later where, boom, it just, you know, I can let it marinate as you do mm -hmm. for a little while. And it just popped up and it was like that, that has happened to me because I'm ignoring everything else. And I, I think what she felt I was trying to do was blame the Reiki at that time. Because mm. I think my word to her was something along the lines of, you told me Reiki would change my life for the better. And look at me now, you know, I can't, I can't walk, I can't sit, I can't pick up my kids, I can't, I can't go to work. And she just one line right back, boom, and it was stab in the heart I was like I wasn't sympathetic because I think I was looking for sympathy I think I was looking for a bit of pity but we look up for a pity party <laughs> yeah um but she threw that right back at me and it was amazing and I'm, I'm forever grateful for her um for doing that Caroline um and Yvonne both of them the two well, what, did, what was the words that she what she told you she came back um what was the exact word she says you know how about you you think about what not being able to work is allowing you to do rather than what the accident is not allowing you to do so i think she was did i hope i got that right um so i turned it around so she was putting it back on me to, to think on it in a different way you know because i don't have to work and i don't have all the stress in my life what's going on it's allowing me to address the reasons why I was feeling so unhappy and so stifled so that was the realization then so yeah, it, not what the accident took away from you but what is it now opening the door and allowing you to do abso or absolutely you to and like you said you know you, you, you keep going on until a tragedy happens well that was my tragedy and it has totally turned my life around because since then I, I see things in such a different light now I didn't realize how negative thinking I was before then but I think that's I think that negative thinking is is, is in a culture now maybe <laughs> even just the human culture because I think we, we concentrate more on the negative side of things than we do on the positive th side of things oh my goodness what if this goes wrong well yeah but what if it goes right exactly what if it goes right Don't think about it going wrong because what you think about you create right uh -huh. everything has yeah. a specific vibration you don't want to you don't want to put that vibration of it going wrong you want to put the vibration out that's going to go right so it's these little things that have come into me oh my goodness it has it's changed me immensely and I'm so happy now you know how happy I'm I have a fabulous husband just now he's so so supportive and so and so loving and he lets me rant he lets me rant a lot of the times because he knows i need to get things off my chest uh -huh. and sometimes he just throws that fishing rod out there and reels <laughs> me right back in because he knows me so well and sometimes he can shoot me down in flames with like one sentence and i'm thinking about it and I get, oh yeah you're right you're so right you know and and it's it's amazing we just got on so super well and he has never once talked down to me never ever once and that was all I got in my last marriage so I it, it's never going to happen but I think now I've been through all of that plus what happened after it I don't think I would ever allow myself 
to be treated in that way ever again. So I really think my boundaries have changed and that red line is like, you know, firmly down there and don't you dare cross it. And I think that's really made such a big difference in my life. You know, it's having the, I now have the confidence and I now have the, the strength and the self-esteem to actually look out for me, you know, instead of putting everybody else first, because oh, yeah. I know you and I are both big on self-care, <laughs> but I had to take that time and understand that I was the most important person in my life at that moment and for every moment afterwards if i didn't look after myself then i wasn't going to be physically able or maybe even mentally able to look after my family you know so it's you are the most important person thing uh, important person in your life and usually what i i, I mentioned is when you're on an aircraft and you're taxiing along like you know what i'm going to say okay. and they, 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 they come out you know the stewardess and she's got all our our props and um she says you know when the when the, the air masks masks fall down from the center console you know, put your own mask on first before helping others with theirs that is how we've got to see our life we've got to see that we are the most important person because if we don't look after ourselves, if we don't put that mask on and get the oxygen, then we're not able to help somebody else put their mask on. And that's the way we need to look at it. Yep. I always tell people, I'm like, how are you going to help somebody if you're passed out? That's it. <laughs> you that's know, so you don't true. take care of yourself first. You, you're, you're burning the candle at both ends and guess what happens? You're going to burn out. Oh, total burnout. Yeah. Been well, there. I know we are going to be out of time soon here, but I want to make sure that everyone for one knows that, this is my co-host for Voyage to Vitality channel, and um, she will have the Transcend to Succeed show on Friday. If you'd like to tell them a little bit more about that and how to find you. Yeah, um, you'll find me live on E360 TV on Fridays at 2 p.m. Central Time on the Voyage to, Vital Voyage to Vitality channel on the Achieve TV network. Um, my my channel is really it's really to help me um, with my story. In all honesty, it's a platform I wanted to create for people that have had the life experience and gained some knowledge and information that they can share with other people that can inspire and motivate them to help them turn their life around. Really, to take the positive steps to break free from their past, right? and actually change their habits and change their vibrations and create a better life moving forward. So really that's, you can come along and see, I'm gonna have loads of guests that I've got all different kinds of stories um, and they are gonna be able to share with us how they managed to overcome it, you know, how they managed to do it without, you know, the, the, the normal methods, you know, of just running to the doctor and getting some tablets. Some people have been doing that, yes, Mm -hmm. nothing was working so they've had to seek elsewhere you know it's had to seek help elsewhere and they're going to come on they're going to tell us all about all about their experiences so i've got some lovely guests lined up so i'm really excited about it actually <laughs> and thank you uh, laura congratulations on this your first show and oh, i'm really um, I, I, that's why I like, you know like minds you know uh, i love building these communities and i think we all need the support and stuff out mm. there um, you know, and the best way to do it is to, you know, be sharing and let people know what they have, what we have out there. Yeah. So. And it's all about your know, truth as well. I mean, if you don't understand and you're not aware that there are other methods out there, then how can you make an informed decision of your own well-being? You can't. You can't really. Yeah. So this is what I want to provide a platform for people to come in and tell us exactly what they what they've been doing um, with yeah, their, and I their healing journey bringing the different modalities together. I mean, you may not agree, you may not understand or, or feel or see the same, but that's okay. We are all individuals, you know, oh, yeah. we're all going to perceive something different. So one thing will work for someone, something else will work for another. Yeah, there's but going to be no size, no here. size that, that fits all, you know, it's all going to be about what, what resonates with you, what feels good. Um, and if we all like the same thing, Laura, it would be a very, very boring world. Yes, it would be. It would be. <laughs> we have a couple of minutes left. So before we go, I want to make sure you can tell everybody about, um, I put the QR code up for your free immune boost system or system yeah. boost. Yeah. Um, I pulled this together. It's just a, a, a short mini course. 
Um, there are several videos which are only two or three minutes long. I think there are, the, the videos are a total between 15 and 20 minutes. It's really about how, how I work and what it is that I do. I had been asked by so many people, what, what is it that you do and how does that work? So I decided I would put together a course and then they can try it out free for themselves. So this one um, will energetically help to boost your immune system. Um, there is a one hour audio um, energy transformational healing and there's also a bonus on the back there. So there is a... Um, another audio healing that has lots and lots of affirmations um, on it too. And there is a, a big supply, I give you a list of all the affirmations that are that are in it. So you can see they're all very, very positive. So um, there is two, two, just about two hours worth of healing energies in there. And it's for everyone out there with my compliments. I appreciate that. And mm -hmm. I so appreciate you being my first guest on the first season. And I am honored of Mindful Mondays because our whole thing is about being mindful, creating that space for you, whatever works for you and to live a healthier, happier life. Because I know for me, at least for me, a lot of less stress, less anxiety is a much happier life. Yes. So, thank you very much for joining me today. And we are out of time for today. So join us again next week. We'll be here on every Monday at 1 p.m. Central Time. And Dawn's transcendent success or succeed in transcend and succeed. Wow, oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> transcend and succeed is every Friday at what time? 2 p.m. Central. 2 p.m. Central. And of course, yep. we'll be on live so you can stream us up anytime. Yep. But thank you all for being here and watching. And until next week. Remember that self-care is not selfish. It is essential for a healthier you. Sure is. Have a great day. Much love. <laughs> yep.